Thank you everyone for taking the time. Um, so I think it's pretty easy to kind of find the positive mental aspects of cosplay. There's a really great sense of community. There's the feeling of escapism as you get to dress up as your favorite characters. And you can also show off your artistic and creative side. Um, however, I feel like there are some less savory aspects that I wanted to explore and some strategies that we could take to mitigate or even avoid these unsavory aspects. So as a quick little agenda, We'll be going over how these less savory aspects of cosplay can infiltrate, how they can even affect your daily lives, and then also how we can build a more resilient mental health. Uh, every time we go through a certain uh, topic, uh, the structure of the agenda will be that I'll do a quick little issue discussion, I'll go over some mitigation strategies, and we'll have a quick little Q&A if there uh, are any questions, just to answer a question or two. Cool. So first topic, burnout. So what is burnout? Um, I like to describe it as a state of emotional, physical, and mental exhaustion around your project. And why do you think it's bad? Well, when you can't create or produce anything good and you don't know how to fix it, you start blaming yourself. So here are some of more common signs of burnout, and I'm sure there are more or less signs that can come through as you go through this. So the first thing I wanted to go over was self-doubt. And I feel like that comes across a lot in imposter syndrome, where um, we sometimes feel that we don't earn the amount of following that we have, or we don't feel that the skill level we currently have is as deserving as praise as some others might think. And one important aspect of imposter syndrome I feel probably comes out, comes in a lot in commissions and especially in terms of pricing. So sometimes we might think, oh no, uh, the work I do might not be worth as much as I think it might be. And sometimes we might underprice ourselves when we truly are actually worth a lot. So I think basically bottom line is as artists, let's make sure that we're not undervaluing yourselves because not only does this hurt you, it also hurts other artists because other potential customers might think, oh wait, this person gave me this art commission or gave me this cosplay commission for only a hundred bucks. Why is someone else asking for 200? So just make sure that you're giving yourself your full work. Another sign of burnout is extended periods of stress. Um, we'll come back to the effects of stress later on, um, but just keep this in mind that this is something that you might be going through. Another aspect is frustration and irritability. So when your reaction to a usually reasonable request is a bit over the top, it might not be that the request itself is bad. It might be that it's your mind that's already been stretched to the edge and the other person unintentionally just pushed you over the edge. Another sign of burnout is procrastination. So either you're no longer taking interest in making your build or you've either put off ordering that costume. Um, procrastination seems to come up a lot during cosplay and especially when conventions are coming up. And this is a topic I will be covering off a bit later, so just keep this topic in mind. And finally, uh, some signs of burnout are fatigue and physical ailments. So this can come through in signs like headaches, stomach problems, um, especially if you're in, say, an idle dance group. Injuries can happen if you're kind of cramming a lot for a performance. So some strategies is to, first of all, keep in mind that it's impossible to, to be productive every single day. You'll always really have moments of, I don't, I can't do this anymore, or I don't even want to do this anymore, even if it's in a hobby or a career you love. So what are some things you can kind of do? Um, one is to either start a new project or finish an old project. I personally find it easier to start something new because I always get really excited about um, the shiny new idea and then um, I just never finish it. So for me, uh, finishing a project kind of helps me get over burnout because I can kind of crack it off my mental list and it kind of just motivates me to keep going. Another thing is to kind of remind yourself, why did you even start in the first place? Um, for me, sometimes I like to watch the behind the scenes footage of how my favorite shows were made. And that kind of inspires me because I think about all the hard work that went in into a piece of media. And then I go like, wow, okay, if they can do it, I can do it. Uh, at least it kind of helps for me. Um, another thing is that you can kind of look at what you've done in the past. So this goes off and this kind of ties back to the previous point of like finishing in an old project. 
because I find that no matter how much you really hype yourself up, it's always best to kind of have concrete actions or concrete evidence of something that you've previously done. So you can kind of point back and say, okay, I've actually done that. And so this means that I should theoretically be able to keep going and do something new. Uh, another aspect is kind of social media. And I always think of social media as kind of like a double-edged sword. Um, for some people, it could be encouragement. I know for some of my friends, they get really inspired when they see someone do really big builds and they feel motivated to push themselves. But that same piece of media for me might actually lead more towards doom scrolling. And I actually feel worse somehow whenever I see these big builds. I'm like, oh man, I'm never going to be able to do something like this. So kind of just keep that in mind when you're scrolling through content, see whether it's actually helping you or whether it's actually being coming more of a detriment. Um, kind of these two last points kind of tie together, uh, playing for burnout and also taking a break. Um, one thing is that you can kind of realize when you have too much, um, especially during the holidays, if you have a lot of social gatherings, you might not be able to be as productive as you hoped you'd be, or you might have less time to focus on your craft. So kind of just be aware of how packed your schedule might be and just keep that in mind. And finally, when you're taking a for a long time and you feel that you don't want to do it anymore but you kind of you're kind of it doesn't apply if this is like a commission or your work please actually finish that but if it's something that you're doing for your own enjoyment there's no one to take a break so why would you even care about burnout so as mentioned above one of the symptoms of burnout is stress and this extended period of stress, it can kind of manifest in so many ways, such as when we're chasing a deadline. And there's many emerging studies that show that stress actually affects your brain all the way down to your genes. So when we're stressed, it could give us that like short term burst of focus and energy, like when you panic, write an essay an hour before the deadline in school. If you're students, I, I'm sure you know what I mean. Um, however, high, constant high levels of stress over a long period of time will really mess up your brain. It increases the activity level in your brain's fear center, and as stress chemicals rise, areas in your hippocampus that regulate memory and learning actually decrease. And as this area weakens, it even causes your brain's ability to regulate stress to weaken. So it's kind of like a terrible positive feedback cycle where like you do something and it gets worse and it gets worse and then you do it just keeps going. Um, however, don't assume that all stress is bad. Uh, there is a concept of eustress or beneficial stress, which is the positive response to stress that is healthy or it gives one a feeling of positive feelings. And it's basically defined by how you perceive stressors. So this is the type of stress you could feel when you compete, when you rise to a challenge, etc. However, I do want to stress that <laughs> this is short term and it actually just as far as it motivates you, allows you to focus your energy and enhances your performance. So, for example, uh, there's this study in this book called The Expectation Effect, where student athletes were observed for their reactions to stress in different scenarios. They experienced stress before an important game and also before an important exam. However, before the game, they displayed signs of excitement and they would like clap each other on the back in encouragement before the exam. Uh, and they would just really cheer. But before the exam, they displayed signs of dread and anxiety. So you could argue that maybe they just felt more prepared for the game than they did for the exam. However, their mindset was more primed to associate the feelings of nerve in terms of a game as signs of excitement. Whereas in the case of an exam, the feeling of nerves were interpreted as signs of doom and anxiety. So this might not completely solve the feeling of stress, however, kind of retraining your mind to associate stress as a sign of your excitement and desire to do well could really help mitigate these effects of stress. Um, I find that this could actually be helpful in cases like cosplay competitions or performances, where there's so many variables in play, such as timing, wardrobe malfunction, prop malfunction, physical exhaustion, et cetera, et cetera, the list goes on. So when things go wrong, that can cause stress to snowball quickly, and that could lead to bigger and bigger issues. So linking this to the strategy mentioned above for you stress, realizing that the pressure and stress of your performance getting to you can be used as kind of motivation and signs of excitement. And as well, just kind of accept that there are events you can't control and recognize that you've prepared to the best of your ability will serve you well. 
Uh, obviously, if you haven't prepared, this use stress isn't really going to be beneficial, but it's kind of having this in the back of your mind that will kind of give you that little like performance boost when you have a new perspective. So that was a lot of talking for uh, 10 minutes. Um, just a quick little Q&A section. Uh, if you have any questions or something resonated with you, um, this is kind of your one minute section to kind of voice that out. Moving on to procrastination. Uh, so there's many jokes about procrastination and there's like that one line I have with my friends where it's called kind of do later, do later. Um, and we seem to feel this a lot, especially when we're trying to like push through deadlines. Um, procrastination is such a really big topic that I kind of wanted it to have its own section. And I'm sure some of you are familiar with con crunching. Um, two days before con to finish your cosplay, leaving assignments or work tasks at the last minute. And it's not like we don't know when cons roll around. We usually know those schedules months in advance. So why does it seem like the bulk of work happens in the last two days? So I kind of wanted to dive a bit more into procrastination, why we procrastinate, and how we can mitigate its evil little clutches. So there's a difference between doing things later, like having to reprioritize your to-do list, versus procrastination, which is when we kind of avoid a task we said we would do for no good reason, even though we expect this behavior to lead to negative consequences. And interestingly, um, procrastination is kind of our mind's way of protecting us from a task we see as threatening or stressful, and we replace the task or threat with something less stressful. You kind of see how stress kind of leaks into everything else, like the little, little insidious little parasite. So, and you know that meme of that guy who's like, who has a lot of string and math in the background? You'll see me kind of do that action a lot. Oh, anyways, so um, we tend to actually procrastinate on tasks that make us feel dread, incompetent, or insecurity. But its studies have shown that the more we put something off, the more we perceive the task will be super difficult. Um, one thing I really want to highlight, though, is that procrastination doesn't equal laziness. Lazy is more likely to kind of sit around and do nothing, while procrastinators have actually been shown to care too much because they're worried that the work that they do won't actually live up to their standards. And kind of guess what? Symptoms of chronic procrastinators are anxiety, shame, and physical ailments. And once again, why do these symptoms sound familiar? Because it can be tied to burnout and it's all connected in this tangled little web. So to break this cycle, uh, previously it was thought that uh, having better discipline and better time management was the key. And this is kind of what a guidance counselor in school told me when I made an appointment with them telling them about my procrastination leading to poor luck marks. Um, and they just told me to get a planner and to just uh, study better and get a better study schedule. Uh, and shockingly, that actually didn't help me study more. It just made me procrastinate even more and it just made me feel a lot worse and that just kind of cycled into a big ball of procrastination. Um, so maybe don't use that strategy if you've already tried that and you've noticed that it doesn't really work for you. So, um, and there's actually research behind this that shows that this strictness can kind of layer feelings of shame and negativity, making the actual task, uh, which was in my case studying, more intense and have a higher level of perceived difficulty. So some strategies you could do is, for one, uh, understand why you why these tasks are causing you stress and fear and kind of address them. So for me, um, studying, it was just that, not just that, but I was really worried that I'm seeing going to do well and my friends were doing really well. And so that kind of cycle just made me not want to study more because in my mind, if I said, oh, I didn't study as much as I could have, it kind of made me be able to justify why my marks were poor. So that was a really poor strategy. Don't use that one. Um, but one useful strategy is to, for one, remove nearby distractions. Um, and it might be difficult because a lot of our things are on our personal laptops now. Uh, we do need our devices to help us with our tasks. Uh, but I know a lot of my friends, when we were in school, we they used to kind of use internet blockers so that they couldn't access social media sites or streaming sites. Um, however, this could also be that strict is coming into play. So just play around with that idea, see if it works for you. And if it does, really great. Um, another way was that um, some of my other friends like to, like to use the tomato 
technique or the Pomodoro technique, which is when you work for 15, 20 minutes, take a break for five minutes, and then do it all over again. Um, that's, a lot of people seem to have really great success with that. So just give that one a shot. Uh, and to, for a more cosplay related example, uh, break up your tasks into small elements. So for example, when I was building, um, when I was trying to build my big project, which is the dragon skin Symmetra cosplay, um, there, there it is. Um, so when I was building my dragon skin Symmetra cosplay, um, it looks like it was a lot because it was a lot of pieces, but in one, but one way that I liked to kind of break things out is to kind of really layer out what pieces are needed. So, uh, for example, I would break it out into uh, the headpiece. I would break it out into the fabric layer. I would break it out into the prop, into the headpiece, into uh, the armor, uh, references, everything like that, and kind of lay it out because that kind of helped me get everything out of my brain and I wouldn't overthink things too much. Uh, you'll notice that there is a budget line over here and I never stayed on budget, so just ignore that tab. Um, and if I and I also found it easier to use kind of Google Sheets because I could kind of have it on multiple devices and it was just easier for me to keep track of things. But obviously you could also use a notebook or other things like that. And this is kind of just what it looks like um, within each tab. So I would kind of break out what tasks I needed to do for the prop, for example, and I would just list out everything. And once I could see that little check mark beside a task being done, that kind of really inspired me to keep going because I'm like, oh, okay, I've already done one step. What's another step? And for me, I thought that was a lot easier, but um, if that works for you, give it a shot. If not, um, you can always use a notebook, do something in person, things like that. And kind of, and yeah, that's kind of what I really like to use, especially for cosplay planning. And kind of the last strategy for procrastination is to kind of just cultivate an attitude of self-compassion and a plan to do better in the future. And that's such a really wholesome feeling, but I find that it's always really nice to just take a break and tell yourself, okay, um, today wasn't as productive as we could have been and kind of regroup and reset, see what we could have changed and see what kind of went wrong, what went well, always have a little recap sort of thing. Um, so yeah, that was, once again, a lot of talking. Um, so just a quick little break, see if anyone has anything that resonates with you um, or have any questions. I, I like that line of saying, but I love suffering. So that really makes me laugh. Yes, we do love suffering. And yeah, um, as someone mentioned, having those projects that can be done in a day or a weekend really helps um, just so that you can yeah get that kind of rush of dopamine and say that yes I have done it I, am, I have accomplished that yeah that really helps too and the week planner is also a nice to-do list yeah R yeah structuring it all out I, I feel that next slide being a comparison so I think in cosplay especially there's a pretty inherent element of comparing being done. So you kind of aim for accuracy, whether it's from your reference or if it's your original character design. And sometimes you might think kind of what's the point of doing something or doing a cosplay when someone else has already kind of done it. Um, one thing to note is that someone will always be better than you. That's just kind of the way things are, but it's always also important to kind of know the barriers you face. And it's also important to note that you will get feelings of jealousy or inadequacy, but the key is how you use that feeling. So I always think that there's two ways of reacting when you see that awesome cosplayer post online. Um, one is that you can complain or uh, speak poorly about that person. It's always easy to say, wow, they have so much time since their full-time job, or, uh, oh, they just bought that cosplay online and I'm making mine myself, or they're just showing off and they're doing something for clout. And um, all three of those reasons are really poor things to say about someone, because even if um, someone buys a cosplay online, that doesn't diminish the fact that they might have to kind of adjust that cosplay to make it fit themselves better. And even if someone is showing off and doing something for clout, once again, nothing wrong with that as long as they're not hurting themselves and other people. 
And the second method of reacting to seeing that awesome cosplayer is to kind of use it as motivation and inspiration to improve. This kind of also ties back to the previous post from burnout of using social media as motivation and inspiration. But between these two methods of reacting, you can kind of see which one is a bit more healthy and uh, better for you. So you're not just being negative to yourself. And also to keep in mind kind of what reaction is kind of going to help you achieve what you want and which one is kind of just making you dismiss someone else's success with it kind of taking into account how they really got there. And kind of I think the important thing is just having that mindset to keep improving every single time and keeping in mind that jealousy is kind of a form of discomfort about a perceived inadequacy. Um, and just making sure that if you feel that there's something inadequate with you, why do you feel that? Is it just because you're jealous or is it because that you feel that your skills could be much higher, but you just haven't had the time of, or opportunity to do so? I like that point of having a notebook with things that come up in your brain so you don't lose that train of thought. Yeah. That kind of really, yeah, that really helps me too. All right, so that was kind of a lot of talking I've done. And so let's kind of look into how we can kind of take care of our mental health. Um, I always think that taking care of your mental health is not fancy um, and it's pretty boring and it's always not immediate and it's kind of a long grind and you can kind of grind this for almost months before you really see the results. But I find it useful to think of it as like a triangle with three sides where you have to take care of your mind, yourself and your body. Um, because all three of these aspects are kind of what make up you. And once you kind of build up that core foundation, you can really see the effects of mental health too. Um, so let's start off with kind of taking care of your body. Um, for one, get enough sleep. And sure, this isn't something that's going to boost your mood immediately. And there could be work that requires you to pull like all nighters or work late at night or like working late at night could be the only time you can do things that bring you joy or you might work the night shift. But um, still, still try to get at least six hours of sleep every 24 hours because there's so many studies that show that when you sleep, that's kind of when your body repairs itself. And that's when you kind of uh, that's when your body kind of refreshes exercise. Um, in the wise words of Elle Woods from Legally Blonde, exercise gives you endorphins. Endorphins make you happy. Happy people don't just shoot their husbands, they just don't. Um, it's a really great movie. Uh, there are some dated things in it, but a really great feminist movie if you haven't seen it before. And exercise isn't really going to cure depression, but it is. it does help as kind of that temporary mood booster. Um, and it does feel nice to just move around and just get some fresh air. And it doesn't even have to be a workout. It can just be a walk around the block. It can be climbing the stairs in your apartment. Anything is better than nothing. Next one, get some nutrition or eat, or eat well. Um, I know fresh produce is a luxury and it could be hard when not the one preparing meals or you don't have time. And one shouldn't feel guilt when you're eating things that are branded as unhealthy. Just kind of always think of what you can be doing to add to your meals as opposed to taking things away. So for example, there's um, in the grocery store, there's sometimes box, those like pre-packaged boxes of spring green mix. Um, I always find that it's really helpful because A, it's a bit more accessible for vegetables. Um, they're usually pre-washed, so it takes away the hassle and the extra mental load of having to wash them and pre-portion them. Um, usually those things used to last me around a week when I was in school, and it was just really easy to just add additional nutrition to um, my meals. And last point, literally just go touch grass. Uh, if you're allergic to grass, maybe don't touch it, but... Um, <laughs> Just go outside. Uh, studies have shown that going outside for at least 10 minutes a day really helps regulate sleep patterns and it helps boost your mood. And as the Norwegians say, there is no such thing as bad weather, just bad clothing. So bundle up and get ready to do some sun soaking or cloud soaking in this Canadian weather. Um, just go outside, take a walk. It'll be really great for you, is what I'm trying to say. Um, 
And so the next aspect of taking care of your mental health is kind of taking care of your mind. So sit with your thoughts. How much of your day is taken up by thoughts just mulling over problems? And as some of you guys have said in the chat, uh, writing things out really helps you kind of take those thoughts out of your mind so you're not always thinking through them. And um, while you're doing this, unless you're kind of actively thinking about resolving these problems, this mental loop of you thinking about issues is just going to cause doubt, anxiety, and stress to take over. And we've already covered why long periods of these emotions are harmful. Um, kind of tagging on to that idea of writing things down, um, I really like to kind of like write everything down and then kind of just cross out the ones that you cannot actively control or change so that you can actually focus on changing the things that you can. Um, next, you optimize your environment. So you are basically the sum of your environment. So if your environment is cluttered, it can affect your mind. So kind of take a look around, look at some easy wins. Do you have a collection of cups by your desk? Are there snack wrappers that you can throw out? You can always just grab a damp paper towel and like wipe off some dust. It'll feel so satisfying, but if there's a lot of dust, you might want to wear a face mask so you don't accidentally inhale some. But it just looks really nice when you have that like, when you have that like really clean dust wipe, that, that, that's the good stuff. So like, just like how we say you are what you eat, don't feed your mind trash. Um, going back into the point about social media, uh, take note of when Instagram scrolling kind of turns into like doom scrolling and be intentional about the media you're consuming. If you want to stay informed about the news, sure, but try to go for sources that aren't really fear mongering. And finally, kind of take care of yourself slash your spirit. Uh, first point, kind of taking, find a, kind of finding a close friend to talk to. Just kind of be careful you're not trauma dumping every time you see each other. Um, your friends are there for support. They're not trained therapists, and they may not be able to handle your emotional baggage all the time. Um, next point, practice self love. Um, pretty self explanatory. I always find, um, but if you wouldn't say a depreciating, depre deprecating thought to your friend, why would you say it to yourself? And it's kind of that line of we are always our worst critics. Um, it, we, we always find that we compare our blooper reel to everyone else's highlight reel. And once again, this goes, this ties back to social media where everybody posts the things that they are doing well on and you only you really know what's the true struggle going on so just be kind with yourself kind of make sure you're not pushing yourself too much um, another point i really like is kind of practice saying no um as they say i don't know who they is but as some people say um every no is a yes to something else so it's that concept of really respecting yourself and others to kind of say no to things that you don't really want to do or it isn't aligned with your purpose. Um, um, in this case, however, uh, if this is a work task, please don't utilize the strategy. If you have work, please do that work. You cannot just go to your boss and say no. This is not that kind of strategy for that. Um, but always keep in mind that you have a limited amount of time and energy every day. So make sure that you're filling it with people and activities that you want to do. So you'll actually give it your best. Um, this could also go into things like saying, going with, with when friends ask you to go out and you're not really feeling it, allow yourself to say no. Um, and I know sometimes it's nice to give people want to give a reason, but usually no is a complete sentence and you don't really need to justify saying no if you don't really want to. Just be polite, as they always say. Um, make sure you prioritize yourself, but as always, have a balance and make sure you're not cutting off your friends. Um, and to relate this back to a cosplay or convention example, if your energies are low, just be okay with saying no to going to that con. Um, it's okay to stay at home, like we are doing now, than it is to kind of force yourself to do something that you're not up to. Um, but once again, as with all things balanced, kind of challenge yourself, but don't force yourself to do things. Um, and also when you say no to going to cons, it could also not just be for uh, mental or energy reasons, it could also be for financial reasons, because cons can be pretty expensive, whether it's just going for the day for those tickets, purchasing merch, um, if you have to 
commute there, uh, transportation costs. Um, if you do want to grab a hotel, all these costs add up. So once again, if you don't feel like justifying your reason to say no, no is once again a complete sentence. Um, another another way to kind of take care of yourself, I find, is kind of therapy or reading, finding resources, finding books. Um, kind of finding books kind of feels like the, uh, I don't want to call it the gateway, but the gateway to going into therapy because therapy is a really deeply personal journey. And I always find that it's best to embark whenever you're ready. But uh, to kind of get ready, it's nice to kind of find resources, uh, whether it's online, whether it's in your local library, to uh, see what kind of resonates with you and that you can go, oh, okay, this kind of this kind of makes this kind of resource relates to my situation. I would like to find out more, but it's always nice to kind of have that starting point. Um, but if you are, um, if you are kind of uh, interested in trying to go to therapy, it's always important to kind of find a therapist that fits with you. Um, and it's kind of hard sometimes to find a therapist that clicks. Um, it's important that they're someone that you resonate with and that gives you support, but they're not just being a yes person because if someone's just being a yes person to you, they're not really challenging yourself and that's not really pushing you to grow. Um, some things that I kind of really thought was useful when I was looking for a therapist is kind of asking uh, kind of uh, what, what do they specialize in? Do they specialize in helping you with like life goals? Are they specialized in helping you being more on top of your tasks? So it's kind of it's important to know what you're looking for and that once again ties into looking at books so that we actually know what's out there. Um, I also like to ask what does success look like for you and your patients? Although sometimes therapists really like to throw that question back at you and they go like, oh, what does success look like for you? And I'm like, that's what I'm asking you. Don't, don't ask me the same question. Um, so just keep in mind that sometimes we might do that. Um, and I also personally found that it was easier to work with a therapist who was East Asian and female like me because sometimes there are cultural aspects that I felt didn't resonate as well with other therapists I tried. But like, once again, uh, find your own method, have your own strategy. One size does not fit all. Um, it just really depends on the person and also on your personal journey. And I, I like the point of optimize your environment. Think of how you'd keep an animal, environmental enrichment, good, clutter, bad. Yes, I really like that point. And the point about uh, advice in terms of relationships, and especially since of how humans are really um, social creatures, that really resonates with me too. So that was a lot of information and that was um, a lot of stuff that I went through. So let's take a quick little break. And let me, uh, allow me to introduce you to our Lord and Savior, Kita Shinsuke from Haikyuu. So if you're familiar with the series, uh, you might be aware of what his personality is like, but as a whole, uh, his whole ideology basically boils down to we are built from our daily routines and how results are a byproduct of the process. Uh, basically all this to say, let me tell you about the power of habits. So throughout this panel, there were a lot of tips that you can consider implementing, and I cannot emphasize this enough. Change is gradual. Do not force yourself to go through with everything in one day. And right now, this is going to move into self-help territory. But as we said, completing goals is one way to overcome burnout. So we're currently uh, one, sorry, not one, oh my gosh, we're currently two, what, one and a half? almost two months into the year. So what are some goals you have? Kind of like take some time, visualize that. Um, do you have uh, any New Year's resolutions that you wanted to do? Uh, do you choose to not set New Year's resolutions because they never seem to occur or they kind of drift off to the wayside after a few weeks? So uh, as, as our Lord and Savior Kita Shinsuke has mentioned, uh, results are the byproduct of the process. So let's kind of get into how we can build an effective process. Um, so going back and using that previous point of taking your care of your body, uh, I'm just gonna use exercise as an example because that tends to be a pretty popular New Year's resolution. So we are creatures of habit. Um, we do things Thing, we do a lot of things that are almost automatic for us because that takes out a lot of mental power that we can save for something else. Um, I know a lot of, 
I don't know how true this is or not, but a lot of tech CEOs, they say, oh yeah, we like to only wear one outfit and we use that same outfit for like the whole week because it allows them to save precious brain power for whatever CEO tasks they do. I still don't know what a CEO does, but like if you do know what that they do, um, feel free to let me know because I still do not. Um, so as humans, we are creatures of doing things that provide the least resistance. So that's kind of why whenever we wake up in the morning, we typically just go through our morning routine without really thinking about it. So it's kind of hard to feel motivated to exercise when your running shoes are put away. And it's easy to reach for pre-made snacks when fruit is hidden in the fridge. So this goes back to what uh, some of you have said about optimizing your environment. So to kind of optimize yourself um, to reach, make it easier to reach your goals, let me kind of provide you with like three tips. And those three tips are kind of listed here already. So one, make it easier for you to perform habits you want to continue to. Um, this is basically just the opposite of the first tip, but uh, make it harder for you to perform habits that you don't want to continue. And this, this, uh, make it harder kind of usually goes for the bad habits you're trying to cut. Um, so for example, for the make it easier habit, um, like we're trying to, like we mentioned, uh, exercise. When you, when we do uh, results are the byproduct of the process, uh, you could give yourself the result of, oh, I want to lose weight, but the process itself is just to be more active. So to make it easier for yourself, you could either lay out your exercise clothes in the morning because once you go to bed and when you wake up, you see them and you go, oh, okay, that's kind of your cue to go do that task or go do that habit you're trying to create. Uh, there's this book called Atomic Habits. Um, I it was, an, it was an okay book, but honestly, just go watch High Q and do whatever Kiteshinsuke tells you to do because like, he basically summarizes that whole book in like two episodes, so you'll save a lot of time. Um, but anyways, the book come, gives the concept of habit stacking, where you where habits are typically done in process of a trigger or a cue and the actual activity. So in the example we just gave, uh, you can set up your trigger, which is the laying out of exercise clothes. And when you see it in the morning, your cue, that'll give you the trigger to actually, to hopefully uh, go out and work out or go out and go for a walk. Or as you mentioned before, go outside and touch grass. Similar concept goes for making habits you wanna break harder. So if you want to make sure that you're eating healthier, for example, that's another uh, New Year's resolution a lot of people do. Uh, for one, uh, the the advice I would give is to never restrict yourself. So if you want to go buy um, chips or if you want to buy candy, please go for it. Um, once again, all things in moderation. Um, but if you are trying to eat less of that, have them in the house, but just put them on a higher shelf, put them in the back of the cabinet, make it harder so that when you are hungry and you want to reach for something, it's harder for you to complete that action and to make it easier to eat healthier have pre-made fruit ready on hand so that once again it's easier for you to reach out for it so those are kind of like the more common new year's resolution goals a lot of people have just some tips or tricks that you can take on to achieve or uh, get that result as a byproduct of the process um, kind of the third tip of uh, visualize how your life will be if um, you continue the good or bad habits. This is going to feel very touchy-feely, so just bear with me. Um, but really visualize how does this potential life feel. Visualize yourself as the person who does these good habits that you choose regularly and kind of like give yourself the chance to become that person. Um, what, if you have time afterwards, kind of you can always like close your eyes and visualize this it, it feels really touchy-feely but like trust me we are the thought we are the accumulation of our thoughts and habits so if you allow yourself to think this way it'll help you with the process of growing into that person but kind of close your eyes tell yourself um i am an athlete instead of telling yourself i want to try working out so kind of notice how much more power you give yourself with that first 
statement. Um, it'll feel silly. It, it feels really silly and like really cringy sometimes, like whispering affirmations to yourself in the mirror when you brush your teeth. But like, as mentioned, we become who we think we are. So like, why not believe in yourself? Um, allow yourself to become that person, I would like to say. It, it's really cheesy, trust me. I, I know how it sounds, but um, give it a shot. Give it a shot. Um, so that was a lot of things that I talked about once again. Um, and just wanted to kind of go into some of the resources that I've used and things that I've tried out. So some things that I've found have been useful is, for one, um, there's this site called Psychology Today. If uh, going to therapy is something that you are interested in, I found it really great to kind of locate um, not people, uh, therapists, because you can kind of like filter on people's specialties and you can also filter on your preference if you would prefer a male therapist or a female therapist. Uh, it's almost like a dating profile, but um, for your mental health. So, um, if you want, uh, that resource is available to try. Um, and also most therapists kind of allow you a 15 minute initial call so you can kind of see if you vibe with that person. And if you don't, then you can always just break it off and don't even need to talk to them again. It's like ghosting, but more acceptable in that sense. Um, another resource that I've tried using is uh, the Healthy Minds program app. So this is a free app online. Um, I find it really great because A, there's like, I don't think there's even any ads from whenever I use them. And you can kind of select your various meditation routes that you would like to do. Um, they have routes for like mindfulness and like developing better relationships or um, if you want, uh, I think they have a path for kind of stress relief too. I've um, yeah, it's just really great. Uh, the guy who talks is really soothing. Uh, and sometimes they have like different, they have different speaker series. series no, series is already plural, series as well, so that uh, you can always just try something new if the current route you're doing is not really doing it for you. I would like to thank the person saying it's not cheesy for like visualizing it. Thank you very much because sometimes I feel it's kind of cheesy myself. Um, but yeah, thank you for that uh, affirmation. Um, so these two books uh, that I found in the library, um, one, Get Your, I Don't Want to Curse, Get Your Bleep Together, and The Life-Changing Magic of Not Giving a Bleep. Um, so these are more uh, geared towards items like if you're trying to be more productive or if you're trying to kind of overcome uh, not doing things that are on your to-do list and you tend to just push things off. I found that these books are kind of really useful. Um, it also has a very humorous tone of talking about things where it, it's sometimes vulgar in some cases. So um, if sometimes profanity offends you, this, you might need to be a bit more selective about what you read in this in these two books. But I always thought that it was pretty useful. Um, the person is pretty humorous. I think I've mentioned that before. But yeah, um, really liked that too. Um, next ones are uh, when the slide changes. But another video that I thought was useful was the um, Avoiding work, watch this while you procrastinate, even when it feels bad video. Um, it's done by Ted Ed. I think it's like an offshoot of the TEDx talks that they do. Um, and the animation is really cute. It's really adorable. And I found that uh, it really explains procrastination in a clear and concise way. And I took a lot of inspiration and a lot of information from that video. So I would recommend you give it a watch too. It goes into something a bit, in a bit more detail. Um, and it's just kind of funny um, because they have this like visualization of like a tennis ball hitting you in the face. So give it a watch. Um, and the other book is The Expectation Effect, um, How Your Mindset Can Change Your World. Um, that one gets sometimes a bit touchy-feely. I don't want, is that a good phrase to use? Sure, whatever, I'll use it. Um, but it's really great in kind of going into more of the science of how your mindset kind of shaped how you think and how um, you interpret things. Because it also goes, it also has a section on kind of relationships and how 
uh, you might interpret an event differently from someone else just because of how you've primed your mind to react. So, um, for example, if um, you are always really annoyed with this like one coworker, and you'll usually tend to view that coworker in more of a negative light, even though the action that they do might not actually be as objectively offensive to you, or um, because you are because you're already primed to be more negative towards this one person, um, you might interpret things with a lot more malice than what they are actually than what is actually happening. Um, so that's kind of it. Um, Q and A period. Are there any questions? Any points that resonated with you? Um, kind of any items you wanted to voice out? Um, please feel free to type it into said chat, or um, you can, as always, you can just uh, let me know in the Discord group. Um, if you, uh, as mentioned um, previously in the chat, I can send the links to the resources that I've used uh, in there too. So. Uh, that is always an option as well. Slacky Moo Gaming said, what would you suggest for someone with low self-esteem and super hard on themselves? Oh, okay. Um, that is a really tough question because I think self-esteem is always something that you have to build yourself. And there's not one solid strategy on how you can do it, but I think self-esteem kind of comes from a having um, kind of the background tasks, not background tasks, kind of having previous history you can back yourself up on. So what are things that make you confident? Is it talking about things that make you happy? Is making, is um, talking about things like anime, for example, make you happy? It's always easier to kind of build yourself up from there. So do you you feel that you would like to make more friends? Is that something that you're trying to do with a better self-esteem? Um, what, but yeah, like, what are you trying to accomplish? Do you just want to be, do you want to be more confident in yourself? Once again, that kind of goes back into your past history. So do you want to be more confident at work? So for example, if you want to be more confident at work, having that history of being diligent in your tasks, being able to, this is always going to be difficult, um, show off what you have done. And if talking in groups is a struggle, then having those one-on-one -on -one conversations, whether it's with a trusted coworker or whether it's with a uh, your manager, that's always important so that at least one person knows all the contributions that you have been doing behind the scenes and if some and um sometimes if someone's like stealing your work that's definitely something that you need to talk out speak out about because work theft is never okay um and having that confidence to stand up for yourself is important i don't think if uh talking I don't think you were really asking about confidence at work, but in kind of your personal life, seeing what makes you happy and trying to build on the interest from there, I think that would be a really great strategy to start with. And also as a thousand and one paper boxes have said, your brain is lying to you and lying right back to your brain. That's always a good strategy. Um, and also the idea of just doing things afraid, even if you're afraid, just go for it. Um, once again, always easier said than done, but um, if you never take that first step, you're never going to be able to go anywhere. I think that's a really big, that, that's, it's always difficult taking the first step, but it's important to take that first step so you can get to the second one. All right, I think that's, that's it for questions. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you for your time, everyone. Thanks for chatting with me. Take care.